good afternoon or good morning, everybody. I am really very happy uh, today because this is the first time, um, you know, uh, in Canada, uh, after the October 19 elections, that I am talking to in public to a big group of people, and I want to say, I sense God, Harper is gone. <laughs> sense God. You know, we, we managed, uh, and let me say, this is a personal thing, no? Um, the, <laughs> The, well, Jason Kenney was attacking me personally many times. He was accusing me of neo marxist uh, whatever, you know what I mean, in many uh, newspapers and um, whatever. So, so he is not gone. So that's something else. But, but uh, Harper is gone. And the other thing that I want to clarify is um, that the original invitation to present today was to the co-director, the other co-director of the FCJ Refugee Center, Loli Rico. We have a loving relationship. She is the love of my life. We work together, we sleep together, we do everything together, but she didn't allow me uh, to represent her. She said, be yourself. So, and she allowed me to be myself, so I, will, I am going to be myself. And this is the house of the FCJ Refugee Center. And I wanna say, uh, it's a 1910 uh, house, you know, I mean, it's an old house, it's huge. We have many things there. Uh, but let me give you what is the inspiration of the model that I will explain. The Immigration and Refugee Protection Act criminalized the harboring of illegals. We harbor illegals. We harbor in this house people that don't have a status, and we serve them, and we are proud to do it. The other thing that we do is the Immigration and Refugee Protection Act criminalize the helping of people that don't have, that they are entitled to come to Canada, you know, because that considered smuggling. And they criminalize that. We do that. We held that and we, we are proud to do it. And now we won, you know, in the Supreme Court, we won uh, and now smuggling the, the concept of humanitarian reasons, if you don't charge money, if you do it for humanitarian reasons and it's no profit for you, you are allowed to do it. We have been fighting for this for the last 20 years, no? And so we managed to do it. The other one about harboring illegals, we're still working on it. But I think it's coming. I think it's, I don't know what will be easier uh, if I retire or they provide us with a green light to do it. The other thing that I want to say is that I am here um, because we have been saying that the express entry program doesn't work, it's not good for immigrants, it's not good for Canada, it's an anti-immigrant project. And now the numbers confirm that. You know how many people have received, uh, have come as a permanent residence you know, in the last six, uh, the, the report said until June, less than 500 people have been here as a permanent resident. 800 people have received visas, and they haven't used, 400 or so, they haven't used it yet. 12,000 people have received an invitation to apply, and only 1,000 people have applied. So, and why we are saying this? Because we are dealing in our office with the international students that sell everything back home, believing that they are going to come here and they are going to apply as a Canadian experience class. And they sell everything. And in the middle of the classes, they receive this memo. You are not allowed. You have to compete now. You have to pay $1,000 for the labor market impact assessment. What about me? What about my children? Sorry, it's over. So where they go? Here in Toronto, they go to the FCJ Refugee Center. So everybody that we help to come that don't have a status, that the government consider illegals, they come to the FCJ Refugee Center. All the people that enter Canada and want to make a refugee application, but originally they cross the border uh, undetected they come to the FCJ Refugee Center. So we work with people that, are, that have precarious status. And we are proud of doing that one. And now, 
I think we have the chance to give these people a chance. And that's why I'm here. Because I want to make a proposal. Let me explain first, what do we do in our office? We address systemic issues, no? Newly arrival refugee claimants and precarious migrants. They face in Canada the lack of resources, lack of options, and options I am talking about social, political, cultural, and systemic options. They don't have an option to be regularized in Canada. They are marginalized, they are totally discriminated, and they are in isolation. Even though they serve us, they are in isolation. So we are trying to fix that problem. So our mandate, we provide shelter and transitional housing for women, refugee claimants, uprooted women. Why we use uprooted? Because anybody that come to this country, if we said to NSP, no, the provincial, uh, we work with uh, non-status people. Oops, not eligible. If we talk to uh, Immigration Canada, we work with non-status people. Oops, not eligible. You work with, I work with refugee claim, not eligible. So what do we do? We have to be creative and we create the term, well, we didn't create the term, but we use the term, uprooted, as a, the main issue. Because we deal with many people that are uprooted. That's a matter of their immigration status. And we focus on children. The other part of the mandate is to encourage uprooted people to pursue their immigration claims in ways that contribute to their success. Not to my success, not to the Canadian success, not to the society's success, to their success. They are the human beings that are in need to succeed. We already succeed. So why we have to compare, you don't deserve to be Canadian. Give me a break. They deserve to be Canadian. They are human beings and it's the basics to make an application as an immigrant. So, and the last point is to assist refugees, precarious migrants, and other uprooted people to adjust to the Canadian society. So we only not help them to regularize. We not only house them and provide the basic needs when they arrive, we also are doing or trying to integrate them in the Canadian society. So who is considered an uprooted or precarious migrant? So it refers to those populations that hold some form of ascendant immigration status, often lacking work authorization, the right to remain in Canada permanently or sometimes even temporarily, and they are lacking social citizen rights. And when I said social citizen rights, I'm referring to the international covenant of cultural, political, and social rights, that Canada is a signatory and violate that convention every time when they have a non-status people in front of them, or when they have a temporary worker or a seasonal worker in front of them. So that, that's why we are going as an office to Geneva next year, because we are going to make a presentation, a shadow presentation, about the violations of the immigration system or the covenants, cultural, social, and political covenant that Canada has signed because they don't have an alternative, a real alternative for people that don't have a status in Canada. Refugee claimants, all of these are the people that are here, you know, that they don't have a permanent status. You can read it, and we can put more than we don't even know that exist. So all these people, we help them. And when I said these people, believe me, I am saying with love, no? It's not a, a term that I use just frequently. The programs that we have. So um, it, it, there is no frame, it's because I did it yesterday myself and I don't have any technology <laughs> driven <laughs> things. But it's not that bad though. So, so we provide, in order to, to help them to regularize, in order to help them to reintegrate, in order to do many things, um, um, you know, the, the previous panel will be laughing on me, no? It was about technology, so anyway. 
So we do popular education, that is a very literal translation from Spanish. We try to do a participative education of the process and whatever, uprooted you. How many youth, they are here illegal, they finish high school, and they don't have access to post-secondary education. So we provide at least two hours of classes for, uh, done by PhD students in our office in order that they get, uh, you know, in the meantime, we are trying to fix the problem. We provide primary care clinic. What was the inspiration? Jason Kenny Karin, the interim federal health program. Well, we open a clinic, and then we, we serve 25 people every week that don't have medical coverage in Canada because they don't have immigration status. So and anti-human trafficking, we don't even meet the international definition in our law. We are leaving people out, out of protection, because we are restricted in that one. Settlement programs, well, if they don't fit the eligibility criteria for settlement organizations, they come. And we try to do whatever is necessary, Ontario works, uh, shelters, whatever. So a network. Everything that we do from that very small house with six people working full time and seven part time, we do it even nationally and internationally. We do it through the networks. So our rooted people, we work with the IRB. We provide the ready tours uh, about the refugee hearing to people that are going to visit them, anti-trafficking trainings. We are now breaking barriers with the, with the uh, city we are working, we did the auditing of the services that the city is providing under the resolution of Sanctuary City. So English classes for non-status people, primary care, mental health, and alternative to detention because immigrants here are detained and are detained for long periods of time in violation of their human rights. And we have to denounce that one and we provide alternatives to detention. So what, are my, what is my proposal? Why we don't use the provincial nominee alternative to create a human and humanitarian and compassionate option when we can help the people that are violated the rights here by us, by our system, an alternative to become permanent residents and to have the life that they deserve? Why we, in our provinces, we don't go and say, we have the provincial nominee alternative, and it's only economic, it's only mild. Why we don't create that humanitarian and compassionate component? And we start with 500 people. And how and see how that goes. Many children, many parents are Canadian citizens. And, the, and the, the, sorry, the, the many children are Canadian citizens and the parents are not. And they are creating many issues about this. So my hope is that this conference is going to go ahead because we are not going to solve the skill issue if we don't solve the immigration issue. Thank you very much.